Chapter 2. There are times and places when it is okay to shear plants, most notably uh, formal hedges. If you have a series of shrubs that were all planted in a row and they're all the same species and they were meant to be sheared, just go ahead and do that. They have been chosen because of their toughness and their ability to withstand shearing. Real topiary is what we call a form of pruning art which breaks the rules of pruning in order to achieve a special effect. This would be when plants are sculpted into peacocks and geometric shapes, things that you would find at Disney World or Disneyland. If you're not being charged admission to a garden, you probably don't have real topiary. What you have is um, somebody's mental lapse. Topiary breaks the rule of no crossing rubbing branches and no non-selective heading cuts but we do it for a special effect. It's high maintenance. It's a bit hard on the health of the plants, and you need to start your landscape early if you want it to be a topiary garden using the correct species. And also, uh, some of the formal Japanese gardens shear the lower story of their plants. We have a uh, uh, one of these PowerPoint slideshows is on Japanese garden pruning, tamamono, and other uh, sorts of specialty pruning. There are also some regular plants in the landscape that we sometimes shear. That would be heather, rock rose, lavender, and broom. And we're going to go over those one at a time. The thing to remember about your shearables is that you want to shear them lightly. You don't want to cut back into the bare wood. If you shear harder and get into the wood that doesn't have any green, or in the case of lavender, gray uh, leaves on it, then it will not break bud and green back up. So the key to them is to shear them lightly every year. Don't let them get away from you and then whack them back later. A shearable is not a hackable and a hackable is not a shearable. And it's really important that you know the difference. Lavender. Lavender is a wonderful plant, very evocative and ladylike. They look like this when you buy them. They're so cute. Aren't they always cute when you buy them in those little pots? But you know, everything gets bigger than you think it's going to. And you need to know that pruning won't stop it, even if you're shearing them every year. Your shrubs have a predetermined size that they have to be. Here's a series of lavenders, different kinds of lavenders. Isn't that beautiful? It smells wonderful. You know, you might as well be in Tuscany or something like that. Lavender, wonderful stuff. But like everything else, they get bigger than you think. And as with all the shearables, it won't break bud from old wood. That's the wood that doesn't have any leaves on it. And they tend to get really untidy and woody. Even if you're doing everything right, this is just a feature of the plant. Somebody asked me what category lavenders fit in, and I said they fit in the category of plants that look good for a while, and then they get leggy and holes in them, and then you rip them out and replace them. And uh, if you read many pruning books, you'll find out that everybody says this. This is what I mean by leggy. This really isn't the tidy little mound that we were expecting, and uh, you can't fix this. By hacking it back, you'll probably just kill it. And lavenders are so cheap that if you love lavender, you just replace it. You know, you let it run for however many years it, it looks good and then uh, rip it out and start over. And be careful where you plant it. Notice this lavender was planted in a fairly large uh, strip between the driveway and the walkway. But when it gets to the walkway and you cut back into that barren wood, it will not gray back up. So you want to plant it way far away from the walkways. I know everybody likes to put it right next to the walkway where it's going to get into trouble. You need to think about, think of it as something about the size of what? Uh, your coffee table. That's what each and every lavender wants to be. Uh, and you must give it that much room if you want it to last very long. If your lavender is just starting to creep out over the walkway, sometimes you can cut the lowest branches off and let the top drop back down, and then it won't interfere with the walkway a little bit. And then when they get old, they sort of crack open, and you can see the kind of the dead bald spot in the middle. 
in an effort to stave off that day, we shear them very lightly in the spring, and some people say to do it in the fall or sometimes just after it's through blooming in the summer. Lightly to keep it dense and compact and, like I said, don't cut into the bare wood and try to make it into a nice dome shape. Don't flat top it. This would seem to be obvious, but I can tell from driving around that it sometimes isn't. Here is a very nice planting of lavender that somebody's just freshly sheared off all the old seed heads and tidied it up. People will argue about the best time to do this. The main thing is don't cut off your flower heads before they flower. Duh. Other than that, take your best shot. Uh, and you can go uh, as hard as there is still something green to come cut back to. And a lot of times if your lavenders are um, dying on you left and right, it's because they're in too much shade or their soil is too heavy. You have clev uh, clay wet soil. Uh, and just a reminder, when they start looking bad to you, do not despair. Be heartless. Just rip them out and replace them. If thy plant offend thee, pluck it out and replace. They're not that expensive. Heaths and heathers, they were usually lumped together. And uh, just like the other shearables, you want to shear them lightly and you don't want to get into the bare wood. I get my heaths and heathers mixed up. Here they are, your ericas and your kalunas. There, there you can see the difference live and in person. Just memorize that, will you? And here too, they're just so cute when you pick them up and so tiny. Here's some springwood pinks, uh, and they're just a wonderful uh, herald of spring. And remember, each one of these will also get the size of a coffee table. A low coffee table, to be sure, but still, each one gets quite large, and you want to plant it far, far away from your walkways so that you don't have to keep cutting into them. Here's some uh, heaths and heathers that are properly spaced. You want to be able to see space between these because they're all going to get big. They will sort of uh, combine into one large blanket of color, but you don't want to plant them too close or they'll um, choke each other out. Here's another nice planting. You notice how they're using different colored foliage to make it look sort of like a patchwork quilt? Enchanté. Once again, don't forget your heaths and your heathers do get bigger. And if you have to whack them back, in order to fit the space and you get into that barren wood, they will not break bud and green back out. Once that is necessary, it's time to rip the whole thing out. Also, they develop sort of bald spots in the center. This is just what they do naturally. I don't, I can't imagine what they look like in the heaths of Scotland with all those silly bare spots that occur naturally. And also some of them mysteriously die one uh, heather expert told me it was because they weren't receiving enough supplemental summer water, but I'm not sure that's it. Just know it's not you. This is something that they do on their own, and don't feel too bad if that's what's happening with yours. Here's a nice patch. Oh, this is very attractive. We're using it with some conifers, and we have different colored foliages. And this will age well. It's surrounded by grass, so as they get bigger, you can just take some of the grass out. Oh, here's that mysterious dieback I was telling you about. Um, what can I tell you? Just rip that out, let the rest of them fill in. And here's where somebody has sheared into the dead zone, and it will not green back up. <laughs> um, timing is also kind of important with heathers. If you're selectively pruning, it doesn't matter when you prune because you're taking some and leaving some. But if you're shearing, which is not selective pruning, timing counts. If you shear something right before it blooms, you have cut off all the flowers. So you wait till it's through flowered and then you shear it. So what if you have a whole series of uh, heathers and they're crowding into each other and coming over the walkway? 
Uh, you can sometimes reduce the size a little bit by lifting up the top, cutting off the lower bits, and dropping the top back down. And you can do that any time of year because you're not shearing it. You're just cutting off the lower limbs. What's left will bloom. Uh, and this works pretty much for anything that looks like a rug. That would be rock rose, junipers, lithodora, and other shrubs that are spreading out and ground covers that are spreading out over your walkways and getting places that you don't want them to be. This is what it looks like. The shrub on the upper left is a juniper, but it could be a heather. And you don't want to saw it straight off like the one on the right because then you get into that dead zone that won't green back up. Instead, you lift up the top, cut off those lower branches that are shown in black, and drop the top back down. And now you've just given yourself a little more space. Maybe you can walk by it. So with heathers, you want to shear them lightly to try to avoid the inevitable bald spot and for moderate size control. Here again, you want to shear it into a nice, tasteful dome. Looks kind of natural and tidy. And you do it in the spring. For your spring bloomers, you want to do it right after it blooms. For your fall winter bloomers, you just want to do it in the spring. And remember, don't cut into that bare wood. So that's pretty much it for your heath and your heathers. I should mention that, like some of the other plants in this category, they want sun. They don't want to be in the shade. They want uh, sandy, well-drained soil, a supplemental summer water. And when they start looking bad, don't feel bad. Just take them out and replace them with something else or uh, maybe not at all, depending upon how your landscape is maturing. Next is the brooms. Cytisus and genista, these are the categories of the brooms in the horticultural field. Here they are, the brooms. It's a little joke. Some scotch broom is what we call a invasive, an invasive plant that has invaded the Pacific Northwest, and it looks like this. It's very yellow. It procreates everywhere. It's taking over the medians and the parking lots and it's bad and don't plant it. It looks like this. It's bad and don't plant it. But not all brooms are evil. Uh, just because one member of a family is aggressive and in jail doesn't mean all members of the family are bad. A lot of the differently colored ones are better behaved. I know of a really pretty sort of pinky one. This is a one I believe it's called Moonlight Broom, rather attractive. Adds a different sort of texture to the landscape. Here again, some more drought tolerance. Likes it sandy. Looks good all year round. Guess what? They get bigger than you think. Everything gets bigger than you think. It's gonna. And sometimes after they've been growing for a while, they'll get uh, leggy, woody, and not very attractive. And also some people don't like their seed pods. But just like the other shearables, they do not break bud if you cut back into bare wood. So if it's gotten really leggy and you don't like it, whacking it back isn't going to help. And in fact, it'll probably just kill it, unless, of course, you want it to die, in which case it'll come back gangbusters. But here's a nice broom doing a nice job on a sidewalk in this hot, sunny spot with some other hot, sunny plants. Here's another nice one, just in the middle of some gravel in this very barren area, not too big, doing a good job. I like it. Here again, you just want to shear it very lightly after the blooms fade, and that way hopefully it will not get leggy and open up. Uh, you can stave off the inevitable day when it's too old and ugly. I <laughs> wish it would work for me. Anyway, if it gets unsightly, just like the others, take it out and replace it. These are not very expensive plants, and they're not really expected to live a long, long time in your garden. What do brooms want? Same thing as always, sun, supplemental summer water, well-draining soil. Rock rose, I think, is going to replace junipers as the most hated plants in the landscape. 
We thought they were great because they flowered. Unlike um, junipers, they had these pretty pink flowers or sometimes other colored flowers. They are drought tolerant. They don't get more than five feet tall, which is actually quite large. You want to think of a carmen gia when you plant a cystus. They get bigger than you think, three by three. That's really, you know, that's your coffee table. Five by five, that's your small car. And like the other shearables, they do not break bud. If you have to shear into the, uh, if you start cutting into the dead wood, the old wood, the barren wood, it will not break bud and green back up, which uh, is a problem. Just like with the junipers that finally got out over the walkway, if you cut into them, they don't green back up. But hey, how can you argue with this? Look at these lovely flowers. Notice the size, larger than the mailbox, large as the human being. But if you have room for a rock rose and you need a plant that isn't as big as a camellia or a double file viburnum, rock rose is your best bet. But you will notice you can't whack back into them. This was a whole median strip of cystus and also burning bushes. And the grounds crew did radical renovation on all of them, cut them all back to about a foot off the ground. All the burning bushes came back, and probably only half of the cystuses lived through it uh, because they don't like this sort of treatment. It's a um, statistical sort of a thing. So the same with the other shearables in this category. If it starts sprawling out over your walkway, don't whack back into the dead zone. Lift it up, undercut it, and drop the top back. If you want to stave off the day when they get too huge and uh, too leggy, you can shear them very lightly in April. And, of course, if it looks fine to you and it isn't in the way of anything, you don't have to do any of this. You can just let them do what they do and get larger. Or if it makes you feel better, go ahead and shear them lightly. Here we are undercutting your cystus, just like the other ones. And guess what rock roses want? Are we experiencing a theme here? They do not withstand the freeze very much, especially if they have wet feet, which is one of the reasons people are starting to sour on their rock roses is at least the junipers made it through the freeze and the drought. Uh, the rock roses only seem to be able to make it through the drought. Still, how can you argue with a plant when it's in bloom and it's living in a place where other things won't? <laughs> 